Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. Happy Sunday. It's NFL Championship Sunday. We'll find out after today who's going to the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm now a avid Chiefs fan. <laughs> That's, I don't really have a dog in the fight anymore, so uh, I'm going to be rooting for the Chiefs, I guess. But we will see. I've got a couple of pickups to show you guys. Uh, but first, I want to really go into a little bit of... Uh, story, I guess, it's story time with Mike, about the history of the YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame. There have been a lot of videos out there about why, when, how all of this got started. And I want to just kind of put the record straight. There's a lot of people that have put out stuff that is true, and a lot of people that have put out stuff that's just simply not true. And, you know, motivations and things about it that just, I don't know. I don't know where they get this stuff from, but I will put a link down below to the very first video when I brought this concept up. <clears throat> and the idea behind it was, it was a contest originally. It was, uh, I'd reached 700 subscribers and I was like, hey, let's do this where people nominate other channels for this, again, completely fictional, made up, doesn't really exist, YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame. If there was one, who would you vote for? If there was this idea, who would you think are the greatest? And I will tell you that my entire motivation for that was being relatively new at that point. I only had 700 subs uh, five years ago, and I was, you know, hearing about all these other channels. And I knew there was an entire group of people that had been on YouTube at that point, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years already. And I was getting to know them because I was getting more involved in the community. I was getting to know more and more people and realizing that I was in kind of this second wave and that there was a group of collectors on YouTube that had basically stopped doing it and they had moved over to Facebook. <clears throat> um, like a, a huge group of collectors that did that. Some of them continued to make content. Some of them bridged the gaps, uh, like Wesker Griff, Mike O, Purple GT, even guys like Amish Dave Archer that had been around well before um, I became part of the community. And so it was like, man, I want to learn who these guys were. I want to learn, you know, I want to find out about them, discover them, go learn and watch their channels and stuff. I mean, I remember watching guys like Puff Bear 359. If you don't know who Puff Bear is, go go look him up. I think his videos are still out there. Thundering 24. Um, but guys like Joey Burtcat 8, who's still doing content. Um, Distemic. God, I'm trying to, I'm missing so many. There, There's so many, I'll call them legends in this community of which one was even recognized at the very first ballot, and that's uh, Sevens, A.R. Falk, Michael Wilkie, uh, A.R. Falk 77. He was voted into the first class. Uh, so that was the idea. Hey, guys, go, you know, who would you vote for for a Hall of Fame? And the, and the idea was, <clears throat> again, to try to reach back in time and pluck these channels uh, from relative obscurity and bringing them back to the present so that people could appreciate what they contributed, what they did, the groundwork that they laid for us to be doing what we're doing today. That was true in 2018. It's true in 2023. So th that was the idea. And, you know, there's people out there that think it was very self-serving for me to do that. And that I was trying to, I don't know, bring light to all the new people and all this and, and, just simply not true. Um, it got twisted the first couple of years into, I thought that people were voting more for their contemporaries and not for the legends, which again, a hall of fame is supposed to be full of legends and not that you can't be, especially in this community, a legend and still community, uh, uh, contributing content. It, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to reach back in time a little bit rekindle that uh, nostalgic feeling from those old, old channels. So that is really why 
<clears throat> I launched this again. I'll put the video link down below to the first video. You'll see that a, a much less gray beard, <laughs> same amount of hair, which is somewhere between Jack and squat. And I don't know that that's just go watch it for yourself and, and make your own determination. So that's why it was done. And then it just kept going. It's like, well, it, you know, are you going to keep doing it? And my thought was, why not? Why wouldn't we keep doing it? You know, this could be a thing that just grows and, and continues to be a part of the community. And so it's evolved a little bit over the years. Last year, I decided it's run its course with me at the helm. And I kind of asked Jake, hey, I think you'd be a great fit to do this. Uh, because if anybody has a problem with Jake, that's really a problem with them because he is that good of a guy. And so, like, J Jake, would you be willing to take this on? And I know he's a Hall of Fame guy just in general. Like, he loves the Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, and I know he loves this idea of the YouTube and he loves the community, all that stuff. So it just made total sense to say, hey, Jake, would you do this? And so this is his second year doing. He's doing a great job. Uh, he's got tons of videos to watch. A lot of you guys are acknowledging that and understanding how much work that he's putting in to uh, determining who the next class is going to be. So props to Jake. And as always, he's awesome. So yeah, that's kind of the story. And here's the other thing. If you have questions about it, just ask. <laughs> like, I don't know why people don't just reach out and say, so Mike, what was you know, what's this, what's that, whatever it is that you are curious about, I am happy to uh, address that and talk about it. So yeah, it's been this thing that's kept going. It's great to see all the ballot videos this year. They're so awesome. I have my predict, I've already given Jake my predictions of who I think is going to get in because watching all of them, it's, it's pretty apparent on three or four of them. I think who's going to have enough votes, but there's so many great channels out there that are being recognized and being nominated by their peers. There's one other video I want to point out, and that is a video I watched literally this morning, and it was Scotty, Aranya Boys, who was kind of just going through what the YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame means to him and why it's important. And I think he, more than anyone, gives a great reason why it makes sense, why it's just such a fun thing and a cool thing. And he, the first 10 minutes of his video, it's a longer video, but make sure, you know, if you want to kind of hear somebody that gets it, in my opinion, about why we do this and why it's important, go watch the first 10 or 15 minutes of his video because he uh, articulates it in a way and, and is emotional and just, it's great. It's really, really great. So <clears throat> go check that out. Yeah, that's it. I got do have a couple of cards to show and something else. So hang on, flip this around. We'll show you that. Hang on one second. All right. Uh, first off, one of my friends, his name's Nathan. He and my dad are uh, thick as thieves, good friends, but he's my age. And so he is a woodworker like my dad. He is incredibly creative. He has a CNC machine, which is basically, if you don't know what that is, it's just uh, <laughs> computer cutting, I guess is the best way to put it in the most simplistic way. <clears throat> and he said, hey, what's your favorite card? And that you own and I told him and so he went out and he and he cut this out of a piece of wood it's light almost like balsa wood but not that light um he cut out this awesome Mickey Mantle 51 Bowman rendering it's incredibly well done it's 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 only in you know black but this is all like his hat's cut out the the shading on the nameplate is cut out, his elbow. But look how cool that is. I mean, what a great idea. He painted the edges black. It's kind of thick. So anyway, that's just, I don't know, something just very well thought out, very cool, and very nice of Nathan to do that. I picked up two more uh, Hall of Famers for the five-star run for 2022 five-star. Uh, the first one is John Smoltz here. That's just a base auto. These are becoming harder and harder to find. They're kind of drying up. And so luckily I only have a few more. I, I doubt I'll get them all because there's Jeter and Nolan Ryan and some bigger names that may just not get bought. But 
I can if I can find them and I and they're reasonable, I'm gonna pick them up. There's the Smoltz. And the last card today is I got the Randy Johnson. Again, another kind of a more expensive autograph, I guess is the best way to put it. But I still need Piazza. So, you know, there's some bigger guys that I still need. But this is one of them to knock out, the Randy Johnson. That is awesome. And, I, you know, some people ask when I showed my showcase why some of them are in mags and some of them are just in top loaders. And the reality is this is how they came. So if they come in a mag, I keep it in the mag. If they come in a top loader, I keep it in the top loader. So I don't choose to put them in the mags. I don't collect mags or have a bunch of them just ready for cards. But this one deserves a mag. It's a higher price card, but I'm glad I got it. So that is it, guys, for today. Hope everybody enjoys football later and have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Keep collecting.